And good evening. Welcome to the very first University of Dubuque football show with head football coach Stan Zweifel for the 2016 season on 101.1 The River, WVRE, Dickieville, Dubuque. And also we are streaming online on video on the University of Dubuque's website. Just uh, click on their website to find that uh, live uh, broadcast link and uh, you can uh, look at our beautiful smiling faces yes. tonight, uh, me and Coach Zweifel. Coach, Great to have you aboard for another season of uh, University of Dubuque football here on 101.1 The River. And uh, we'll be on the air with all the football games for the 2016 season as well with, with the Spartans. And uh, I know you guys are chomping at the bit right yes. now to get things going. What an exciting time. Yeah. And what very happy to be back with you, Tim. And uh, really excited about the 2016 season. Everybody's undefeated at this time as we get ready for the first game. And a lot of optimism from all the teams in the conference. And uh, exciting time for us, really uh, getting ready to, you know, fall camp is a very tough situation. A lot of practice time, a lot of meeting time, and uh, it's always nice to go hit somebody else. We scrimmaged UW Oshkosh last Wednesday, a very, very fine football team. I think we identified some of our mistakes, but it's just it's a fun time to get ready to play. Starting your eighth season as uh, the head football coach here. Are you at the, sure of that, the Tim? University has it been Dubuque? that long? I don't know. Paul okay. Meisner's here. Okay, Maybe gotcha. we can check on that. I think He's it is. Sports information I think you're director. right. So it doesn't seem that long. Really, time flies when you're having fun, my friend. Let me tell you that. <laughs> Coming off uh, the second Iowa Conference Championship from a season ago, ran the table undefeated in conference play. Uh, had a nice season, eight and three playoff team again, and uh, you know you look at that, and that's. Uh, you know, when you came to the university, you talked about uh, those type of things that yep. you were able to accomplish. You've done yep. it uh, twice since you've been here, and, uh, you know, it uh, certainly was a great season last year. It was fun. It ended on a very, very disappointing note uh, with a great St. John's team, I thought, and we did not play very well. And, of course, <clears throat> our goal always is to win the conference championship, and when you do that, you feel good about that goal. But we really like to move on in the playoffs, and we've had North Central in uh, 2011, a very fine football team, and then St. John's, we just – for whatever reasons, I thought, Tim, in this offseason, uh, as we got done with the playoff game, I thought we needed to improve our team speed. I really did. St. John's exposed some of our lack of team speed, I thought, at all positions. And uh, we really tried to make a concentrated effort to bring in some more speed at all positions, and I thought we accomplished that goal. Now we'll see how that all translates because we're young at some very critical positions, which I know we'll talk about as the show goes on. But I think like anything else, you always try to identify your weaknesses and strengthen them, and then you really accentuate your, your strengths. And we do have some really good strengths on our football team. So uh, I think we'll have a, a very good season. Uh, again, I think like anything else in college football, the position of quarterback is such a critical position, Tim. If your quarterback doesn't play well, it's very difficult with our offense to, uh, to be successful. So again, a lot of pressure will fall on our, our, our starting quarterback, Connor Feckley, who played one game for us last year, won the conference championship a game at Cole that clinched our championship, and then uh, was our backup to Rio. And uh, so he'll be stepping in. The only thing he lacks, Tim, is experience. He's got a stronger arm that Rio did. He's probably as elusive as anybody I've had since Wyatt Hannes at quarterback about being able to move around the pocket and extend plays, but he doesn't have the experience. So we hopefully can get that experience to him as we move along. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the offense and defense a little bit more as the show goes. Yes. Expectations there and maybe yep. some of the personnel that uh, Spartan fans are going to be hearing from yep. this season. Uh, game week is here, though. After a couple of weeks of fall camp, let's talk about fall camp. Uh, feel like uh, you got everything uh, in you needed to, and uh, I, mean, I know how a coach feels yes. about that. You, you probably know, don't. You know, Tim, I've really, uh, <clears throat> maybe it's just I'm getting old. I, I actually think as fall camp progresses more and more along through my years of coaching, I, bec I become softer. Now, the players wouldn't tell you that, but I've actually <laughs> thought that, you know, you can only do so much, and uh, mental preparation sometimes for us in this fall camp, we cut back on the number of practices we were allowed to do. We've actually taken two less practices than we were allowed by the NCAA. Two factors. One was the early heat and humidity that we had in fall camp. And the second factor is if most people know me, I'm a real grinder. And I mean, I, we really practice hard and long. And as I identified some of our position players' legs, specifically the DBs, 
wideouts, linebackers, the guys that have to run a lot. We just thought giving them an additional rest would help. Now we'll see how that all pans out. Tim, I can't tell you right now whether it was beneficial or not, but we did that actively. We've also always felt that one of the things that we do a great job at here is preparing our kids and identifying and evaluating our kids' talents. So what we did is took a little bit more time with film trying to get our players in the correct positions to allow them to compete successfully because in our level, we just don't have the spring practice like they do at one and two where you have 15 padded practices and you can identify some of the strengths and weaknesses. So fall camp for us is to try to get guys in the right place and allow them guys to do well. So we've really worked very hard and I think we've identified those strengths of our players as well as their weaknesses and trying to accentuate the strengths and hide the weaknesses a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of good positions, battles yes. going on. You lost a lot of talent off of last year's team. You'd still bring back some veterans from last season's team, but uh, you know, uh, you got a good class of incoming recruits and, yeah. and that sets up some pretty good position battles. So look at the depth chart and there's a number of uh, yes. freshmen yes. right Competing. there in the number two spot. They are. You know, I'll, I'll say this first of all, Tim. Last year we started this a year ago when you and I talked I didn't think it was my best football team that I had had since I'd been here and it may be still not as good as the talent that we've had in other years but the team was uh, tremendous teammates tremendous camaraderie and tremendous passion and we started out badly last year as you remember we went 0-2 and, and then we won a nail-biter at Pacific but our kids really hung in there I'm not sure what this team's personality is yet, Tim. I don't have enough sample and or enough information to tell you that. But if we can get those kids to gel and put those kids together, I thought last year's team won because of their will more than because of their ability. And that really is fun for a coach when you have a team that uh, has great enthusiasm and great energy and really finds ways to win. So. Again, that team is gone. It's different. We lost a ton of seniors. Man, oh, man, did we lose a ton of seniors. And seniors usually know what the heck's going on, both off the field and on the field. So that makes the transition part a little bit more difficult for us this year. So we're catching up some of those things. We have only seven seniors. We've got a big class of juniors, 23. So we have to rely on that junior class as well as those minimal seniors to give us some leadership. Mm -hmm. You talked about recruiting speed, yes. bringing kids in on campus that yeah. are quicker. What were some of the areas you really tried to focus on as far as trying to make this team better uh, as you far bet. as recruiting? Tim, I thought last year in the two times we played St. John's, we had a dang difficult time of tackling in space. So we tried to identify linebackers that could run really well sometimes that are going to be a little bit undersized. We identified and brought in some corners and safeties that we think can run. So there'll be times out there we might be playing with six defensive backs because very few people in the conference and or who we play ever play with a tight end and fullback. It's almost like dinosaurs. You know what I'm saying? We're the only ones that are in the extinct level about playing with those guys. So I tell our guys all the time, the more speed we can get on the field, the more times we can match up with some of those slot receivers. So that really was a, a, a goal for us, and we, I think we accomplished that. And then this is the best group of receivers I've had since 2011, Tim. I can't tell you how excited I am about our receiving core. And not only are we good, we are deep. I think we have eight guys that can come out and play for us, and they've all got exceptional quickness. That was another part of our, you know, in the St. John's games, Tim, and I don't mean to go back, but they covered us man to man and we had a hard time getting open. A lot of it was the speed matchups that we had. So we went out, we didn't care about getting a small receiver or a big receiver, tall or whatever. We wanted some kid that could run and we've done a good job with that. Mm -hmm. Well, let's start taking a look at this team. Uh, first of all, offensive side of the ball. Uh, Stan, give us a preview of yes. uh, what the Spartan team is going to look like. Maybe give us some of the, the names of yep. uh, those we're going to hear from on Saturday afternoons. Well, the first guy you'll have to take a look at is Pat Cusack, our sole returning offensive lineman, the first team all-conference pick. He'll be playing our left guard. He's really got to do a good job in a couple of areas. Number one, he's going to have to be a great pass protector. We're going to sometimes put him man-to-man -man on that situation and give our other four new offensive linemen some help on that. A guy that's had a great fall camp for us is Colin Stefanowski. He was a backup last year at guard. We've moved him to center. He's a big kid, unbelievably great kid to coach, high effort, uh, and really a very smart kid. Now the other three offensive linemen, Sawyer McCaffrey, our left tackle, is a junior, hasn't played very much. 
He's playing out at left tackle. He's got some really nice strength skills. The problem with the left tackle is, you know, you got a solo block sometime on a five technique speed rusher. We're trying to develop that as we go along. Greg Smith, a transfer from Central, will be our starting right guard. He's a senior, hasn't been with us, but has been, he's a played through a lot of football games, started seven games for Central last year. And then our right tackle is Jake Britton, who I thought was one of our best offensive line recruits we brought in a year ago from Woodstock. So we go junior, senior, sophomore, senior, sophomore. So we're not quite as young as you think. We're mm -hmm. just different than we were last year in those starting guys. So that unit, like everything else, we haven't seen it in live action yet. So that'll be really interesting for us. And we'll get a good test with Bethel in that offensive line. I think we return the best tight end in the conference. He could be a, a All-American player for us. Trent Curry, big kid, runs real well. Uh, he had three outstanding games last year for us. We're going to target him a bunch. It's very difficult, I think, in college to match up a safety or a linebacker on a tight end that can run, and we'll run him vertical. So we're excited about him. Uh, our backup on that's going to be Donald Narciss, who's a uh, sophomore for us. Our wideouts. I don't know where to start and finish with this, Tim, but I'll start with this. You know, we got Dylan Schultz back, a second-team All-Conference pick, and he's fighting like heck to maintain his position. That's how competitive the battle is. Wow. Najee Toomer, who started for us four games last year at X, has exceptional speed. He's going to be our split end, our X receiver. He's won that position flat out, but we got a guy behind him, uh, E.J. Jenkins, who's a freshman from Menasha. 2015 state champions in Wisconsin. He's about 6'1", but he's got arms like a 6'6 guy, and I'm telling you, boy, is he good with the ball in the air. You know, I saw him at the scrimmage, yes. and he did look like he was taller yes. because I of mean, his arm he's length. He's got yeah. tremendous arm length and wide shoulders, and we match him up, I think, against the two best cover corners in the conference in our team. And he's an exceptional athlete with that. So get ready for some jump balls in the red zone with him. He's got tremendous ability. And I've never had two X's that good since I've been here. And we've had some pretty darn good X's, our split ends, since we've been here. And then we got three guys at slot who I, I just i am really excited about. Austin Morgan returns for us after taking his mission. You know, we've talked to guys about his story. He came to us from uh, Henderson, Nevada via Hawaii. He took a two-year Mormon mission and then spent a year in Japan. Wow. I mean, holy cow. A little traveler yeah, already. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And he's back. You know, he had 71 catches as a freshman for us here. And he owns the Iowa Conference record, record for receptions in a game, game. Yeah, yeah, against so, Central. Yeah. So he's back. And I'm not sure he's won that starting position because another freshman, Cody Reimer, from Menasha, brings us just Tons of ability like Austin. They're almost like clones. And this is a true story. When I watch tape, I can't tell who's who. <laughs> I got to get a close up so I can see their number because they're just about like twins, size and ability. And then Johnny Duarte, who caught 19, 20 passes for us last year as a junior. And he's back pushing Schultz at that Z spot for a starter. So just loads and loads of talent there can't wait to see those guys get going mm -hmm. i think we return one of the most the best if not the best back in the conference and and mo harian he's going to be a sophomore he came on so well for us at the end of the season and of course i don't know if the fans remember he went out in the second play against st john's with a sprained ankle and that really changed our game plan in that game he's back healthy he is as fit as i've seen him he's lost about 12 pounds uh, put on some really good muscle mass, but also is more fit and faster than he was last year. So that's really exciting for us. Uh, the backup tailback, I'm going to tell you, Tim, we have three kids that I think are outstanding. They're all in the molds of a change of pace back, a, a little bit scat backs, change direction. We got Damian Clemens, who's about, I don't know if you'll see him, he's about 5'5", 140. So <laughs> we hope he doesn't get hit too much, but he's really like a water bug, and he'll do some things for us. We got Darius Crump, a kid we got in late, who was the fourth leading rusher in the state of Illinois last year. He came in late for us. He's going to have a chance to see some action out there. So we really feel good about that. Now at fullback, we got two kids. One's a senior and one's a junior. They've been in the program for four and three years, uh, Holly Holmes and Mike Gilson. And we've been kind of drifting away from our two-back offense just because of our receivers. But there'll be some guys that'll give us stability in the run game and the pass. And then, of course, we've got go to Connor Feckley. And I'll tell you this, Tim, I brought Connor in two years ago to be my starter. He was a 
the uh, Gatorade Player of the Year in Alaska uh, for Anchorage West team that was a state championship his junior year and the runner-up his senior year. He went to Colorado uh, Mesa on a scholarship, and I continued to, you know, be involved and see how things were going. He decided to come to us two years ago, but got beat out at that time by Rio. And so he's into his junior year now. He's, as I mentioned, he can extend plays. He's got a strong arm. The only thing he's lacking is experience. So hopefully these two f first non-conference games will give him that experience. And then our backup is Mike Briscoe, a, a nice big tall kid, 6'6", about 230 out of McHenry High School. He too doesn't have much experience, but he's got great ability and great potential. I'm hoping that he doesn't have to show that ability and potential for a while this year as we get Feck some experience. This is the UD Spartan football show with head football coach Stan Zweifel on a Monday night, the uh, Monday before the Spartans kick off the 2016 season right here at Chalmers Field. They'll be taking on Bethel University, and we'll talk about that matchup when we continue. But first, we'll talk about the Spartan defense for 2016. When we return, you're listening to the UD football show with Stan Zweifel on 101.1 The River. We're back at Chalmers Field, and the football practice is over with for the Monday session, and the countdown to kickoff for the 2016 season is on. And Saturday, it'll be Bethel. The Royals will come to uh, Chalmers Field here, and we'll have the ball game on 101.1 on the river. Jim McLaurin will join me for the play-by-play. -play. You can watch it uh, on video, too, right where you're watching it, if you are online at uh, the university's website, dbq.edu, and listen to the play-by-play -play as well. One o'clock uh, kickoff, and we'll talk about uh, Bethel here in just a moment and the rest of the Spartan schedule, but let's go to the defense. Uh, Stan, uh, great defensive unit a oh, year ago, and... Uh, they were fun to watch. Your linebacker core was yeah, uh, you know, a great great group of guys to watch so over their career yes. and uh, now now you've got a new set of faces there and uh, just talk about the defensive look for us. I would first of all tell you that uh, Coach Coleman and our defensive staff <clears throat> did what I thought uh, we should have been doing in the past. Be simple, play hard, run fast to the football and that's exactly what they did last year. I don't think we were very complicated, I don't think we were very complex, but boy did we rally to the football. Did we run to the football and did we play with great enthusiasm? And I can tell you on defense, from an offensive standpoint, if those guys play hard and run to the football, it makes up for a multitude of mistakes. One guy can miss a tackle, but there's two more there. One guy can miss an assignment, but somebody covers up for him. Defense is a lot of want to, and that defensive staff got our defense to want to last year. And that was exciting to watch. And as I mentioned earlier, Tim, one of the things I did when I looked at our defense, man, let's get some fast guys in here because if they do that, we're going to have a lot of guys to the football. When you look at our defense, as you've already mentioned, we lost a three-year star starter in Trevor Stoner at one linebacker spots, and I thought we lost the best defensive player we've had since I've been here in Blaine Snitker. The defensive MVP didn't play in three games because of that knee that he had, and also just... Uh, Man, did he have a great senior year those last seven games in the conference. He did an outstanding job. We had seven senior linebackers last year, Tim. So, whoa, baby, that's yeah. a lot of guys gone. So there's not much experience there. So what did we do? We looked at our offensive at our fullbacks, and we thought, who on our offensive has that kind of personality that can be redirected to play defense? The first guy we thought was LeDevin Smith, our starting fullback for the past two years. 5'11", 225, and he can run, Tim. And that's the first change we made in spring is putting him at inside linebacker, and he'll be one of our starting inside linebackers tomorrow. Or Saturday, excuse me. Jake Owens, a kid that we played all over last year as a true freshman from Arizona, he'll be another kid that'll be in that linebacker situation on that. And then we have a number of young guys, Chad Marsh, who we're really excited about playing some linebacker for us. There are uh, three or four other guys, and Tim, I think we'll run eight, got different guys playing linebacker on Saturday. I think that's good because you keep yourself fresh. I think it's good because you put some people in positions, and Tim, we'll be moving defensive backs, playing some of our outside linebacker positions because of our team speed. So you're going to see something a little bit different from us, probably playing a little bit more multiple defensive back packages as we move on. In the secondary, we returned the best cover corner in the conference, Michael Joseph, first team all-conference. Oscar White, 
we'll have some argument with that. We just left this was a first-team all-conference defensive back. Yeah. We had the two starting first-team all-conference defensive backs. Michael Joseph has been fantastic in fall camp. We have Johnny Higgins transfer to us from Central College. Um, he's a really good cover guy, have an outstanding fall camp. And then we have an outstanding freshman, Kelvin Medrano, who's along with that Cody Reimer and EJ uh, that I talked about from Menasha. He might be the best player in their 2015 state championship team, and he is a tremendous corner. He can play safety. He can play outside backer. He's a big corner. Shade under 6'1", about 190 pounds, and he can run. Now, that allows you to do some things. So that's why I talk about having some extra defensive backs in there. We have two starting safeties who played 11 games last four year ago, and if you remember last year I'm talking to you, we moved him from wide receiver to safeties and both of them competed and did outstanding. Derek Shambeau and Derek Trotter. They both had great fo uh, fall camps. And Coney Bidashevitz, who was our first safety in last year, is back for his junior year. Shambeau and Trotter are juniors, and Bidashevitz is a junior. Johnny Higgins is a sophomore, Calvin Medrano a freshman, and Michael Joseph a junior. So you can see we've got some experience, but man, oh man, we got some youth in there also. So really excited about that. Will Hudson is the guy that anchors our defensive line coming back. He's been a three-year starter for us. He needs to have a really good year for us to do well in that stop in the run game. Dan Pike, who was in our rotation last year, will be the other starting defensive tackle. The Wilson boys, they're not brothers, Jay Wilson and Q Wilson will be manning our edge players, but we've had, oh my gosh, Tim, we're bringing in three or four outstanding freshman defensive ends. Mike Gullins from Sun Prairie, I think, um, had a chance to walk on in Wisconsin. We were very fortunate to get him. Uh, Ravon Woods from Oak Park River Forest was a potential Division II scholarship player. They're a little bit undersized, but they match what I talked about in that team part of it. And then we have a couple young defensive linemen will be in the rotation. Tyler Womack and Bronson Watson will be guys who will see some action for us interior. We roll our defense a lot. Tim, we didn't roll our linebackers last year probably as much as we will this year because of the youth and experience. But our defensive line, we always try to play eight deep on that. And then I'm, I'm so excited about our secondary. It's been a really good battle in fall camp with our secondary and our receiving core. Mm -hmm. Special teams-wise, uh, you have to reload there a little yeah. bit as well. Boy, I'm going to miss Curtis. I'm going to miss Curtis Prowl. Curtis helped coach with us this year. Yeah. He had an outstanding year and seasons for us. Uh, two really good, outstanding seasons, consistent. Uh, Braden Neuendorf, and Curtis would tell you this, has more talent than Curtis has. A bigger leg, uh, a lot more distance on his kickoffs than Curtis had, but he's not consistent right now. So we're really working very hard. The guy that we're going to miss the most is Walzak, Lucas Walzak, our snapper. In the past eight years, I've had uh, two long snappers who've been eight That's years right. for us, and they've been... One's an All-American, and one was as good as the All-American. So, yeah. boy, hard to replace those guys. But Cam Sorensen, a tight end for us, will take over the long snapping duty. Our holder's going to be Cayman Martins, who's been our holder for a year. And then we'll have Connor O'Malley or Cayman being our punter. Connor punted the games after Cayman broke his leg up at St. John's. So he's coming back with experience. But it's uh, the, the kicking game is kind of unknown to us right now, especially the extra point and field goal, Tim. This is the UD Football Show with head football coach Stan Zwiefel. We'll come back. We will talk about the Spartan schedule and the first game of the season with the Bethel. When we come back, you're listening to the UD Football Show on 101.1 The River. We're back at Chalmers Field, the home for our University of Dubuque football show with Stan Zweifel as well as UD football, their home games and their first game coming up against Bethel this Saturday. And we want to say thank you to Conlon Construction, University of Dubuque and Dubuque Bank and Trust, our sponsors on tonight's uh, broadcast. And uh, Coach, uh, it all starts this Saturday yeah. with uh, Bethel. Uh, the schedule, you always try to schedule two competitive opponents sure in the non-conference. Well, it used to be three, just yep. two now. And yep. now Iowa Conference play after that. So uh, talk a little bit about the schedule. You know, first of all, Bethel's coming in. They're from the MIAC, which is, as I told you, I have a, I think, a very good handle on the, the conferences in Division Three. The WIAC is number one, and then the CCIW and the MIC, depending on the years, are number two. So we're going to play a team that has tremendous playoff experience. Last year they were five and five. 
But they've been in the playoffs four out of the last seven years prior to that, conference championships twice. They are a good physical team that return a ton of guys on offense, but not as many on defense. They hit, got hit by graduation on defense a little bit more than they did on offense. It looks to me, and they did not scrimmage, Tim, but it looks to me like they might be changing their philosophy a little bit. They've been a pretty good gap team, which means they're going to run double teams up front and try to run the power against you. But they look like they might be changing a little bit to help with their skill because they've got some really good speed. Their starting tailbacks, a transfer from South Dakota State, was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Minnesota. And Minnesota always produces some really fine backs. And he went to a 1AA team. We saw him last year from their last year's tape. He looks to have slimmed down a little bit and be a little bit faster. So he presents a problem. They've got a quarterback who's a transfer from Lafayette. That's a Division I AA program who was hurt last year with a knee injury. And the other kid played, and he's coming back. So we think they might be a little bit more wide open and spread and throw the ball a little bit against us and do some other things. So they present some problems on that part. On defense, they've always been a really... Uh, what we call an odd front with three down linemen and four backers and four secondary guys. And they're very aggressive and they have a lot of movements and a lot of stunts and they will play some man coverage. I believe they'll probably come after us with a pretty inexperienced offensive line and new quarterback. So we'll see if that all pans out. They're an outstanding program. The coach has been there 27 years. Oh my gosh, that's something. So there's a lot of continuity in their football program. D coordinator, 17 years. Some of their assistants, 15 years. So you know they, they know what's going on. They have a, a pretty good handle about what's going on with their own team. First time we played into my recognition in the history of the University mm -hmm. of Buke. And of course, that'll be fun. It's always fun to play somebody from a good competitive league. And then game two, we fly out to Portland with Pacific, who we've had close games with the previous two years. We've been fortunate to beat them, but it's been a toss-up game going in the last five minutes of the game, each in each of the previous two games. So it'll be a competitive schedule for us before we jump into the league. And jumping into the league, again, I, I know that you'll bring up that uh, we had the most first-place votes from the opposing coaches. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> but I will Put tell the target you. right squarely in the center. What I back. always say about that, that's a reflection of last year more than it is a reflection of this year. And so we're not quite sure how it's all going to shake down. I would tell you this, Tim, as I watched tape over the summer and looked at what people got coming back, Wartburg obviously is always going to be one of the teams that will be in the top. Central College is going to be an exceptionally good football team this fall. We play down there. Uh, they've got a lot of folks back, the most seniors they've had since I've been in the league. And traditionally, they have a lot of seniors, Tim. So that's a lot to say about their football program. And I think they'll be very, very strong. And I don't know the last time when Dubuque's won in Central, but it's been a while. I know that. And I think that you're always going to have a chance with the co-football team to pop up and get somebody if you're not Nebraska Westland I don't know enough about to tell you what's going on and so there's going to be some really good competitive football games what we want to do Tim for us is we want to be playing meaningful games at the end of October and November and that simply means putting yourself in a position that you have a chance to win the conference championship I don't know how that's all going to shake out. I think we're going to be a real good football team, but there are some questions that are yet to be answered by our football staff and our players. How we answer those questions and how we play in those first two games will be a strong indicator of what we're going to do. But, Tim, I always believe the non-conference games is to play the best opponents you can mm -hmm. get and then get yourselves ready for the close competitive games that you're going to play in conference. Identify your weaknesses, evaluate your strengths, get people in the right position so that when we open up with Simpson, a home opener for us, on week three we have got all the questions that we can possibly answer be answered and we're ready to go play competitive football as the luck of the draw has it uh you're gonna have your bye week in week 11 yeah. so you got 10 straight weeks of football my friend now tim the last time we did that was 2011 when yep. we won the league and we got a bye before north central so i don't know if history repeats itself i think somewhere that was said by a much <laughs> smarter guy than i am but we hope history repeats itself 
But you know we're not going to get a break like we have in the past. And those breaks have been good for us because they have allowed people to heal. But, you know, that's part of the deal, I think. Coach, any final thoughts? We've got to wrap up this show for this week. We'll can't wait. Tim, I up. can't wait. I know you can't. Let's I mean, get a lot of folks over there to watch us play. Yeah. It's going to be a great, great intersectional game from a MIAC conference, as I mentioned before, one of the best conferences in Division Three football. And I hope it's going to be a beautiful day. I think it will be. No matter what, it's going to be a beautiful day because football is back on the University of Dubuque campus. The Spartans will be taking on the uh, Royals of Bethel coming up uh, this Saturday from uh, Chalmers Field. And the University of Dubuque Spartan football season is upon us. And you can listen in to the UD football show or uh, view it online. We're going to be here next Tuesday because of Labor Day, Monday falling on Labor Day. And so we'll be here Tuesday, but then Mondays throughout the rest of the season uh, to talk uh, football with head football coach Stan Swift. Stan, we'll uh, see you on Saturday. Thank you. Thanks so much. All right. You've been listening to the University of Dubuque football show with head football coach Stan Swift here on 101.1 The River. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll talk to you Saturday afternoon here from Chalmers Field as the Spartans take on the Bethel Royals on 101.1 The River.